Baja. Bajaj. Baja. Oh, I don't know. Yep. Right, a total of 1,200 votes for today's video. 80% of you telling me that you want today's video subject to be my first thoughts on the new baby Bonneville. Right, I want to make it clear from the start that I've got absolutely no idea how to pronounce Bajaj. I've mentioned them before and I got into lots of trouble with my Indian viewers on how to pronounce it. So if I am making a fool of myself with my pronunciation, please let's just pretend that I'm not. Right, now we've got that out of the way. Last week, just about at the same time that Royal Enfield released the Hunter 350, some leaked spy shots appeared of a late stage prototype of Triumph's collaboration with Bajaj Autos in India. A motorcycle that's been dubbed by the motorcycle press as the new baby Bonneville. Now personally, and I'll sort of go into the reasons for saying this in a little while, I don't think these are spy shots, I don't think they were leaked, I think they're quite deliberate, staged and contrived shots issued by Triumph to coincide with the release of Royal Enfield's Hunter 350. Now it's no secret that Royal Enfield have caused Triumph some problems in recent years and Triumph have behaved like this in the past especially when the Interceptor and the Continental GT were announced or released. I think this is a quite deliberate attempt by Triumph to steal a little bit of Royal Enfield's thunder and perhaps ride on the back of the Hunter 350 to get a little bit of attention to come their way because this baby Bonneville collaboration with Bajaj Autos has been sort of on the books for about four years now at least. Although the Triumph name means a lot to a lot of people, Triumph motorcycles themselves are only a little fish. At the beginning of this year they touted projected sales of 69,000 motorcycles this year. Just to put that into perspective, for Royal Enfield that just constitutes a good month and Bajaj Autos is a very similar sized company. They're enormous compared to Triumph. Now about 2016 Triumph positioned themselves as a premium company building large capacity premium motorcycles which means expensive motorcycles aimed at the western market. Now the problem with the western market is that year on year it gets smaller and smaller especially for that type of motorcycle and Triumph have been unsuccessful at breaking into the larger and more buoyant Asian market because of the types of bikes that they're building. Asian countries for the most part require cheap small to medium capacity motorcycles and a lot of these countries like India impose huge tariffs on any foreign products imported into their country. So an already expensive motorcycle becomes horrendously expensive by the time it hits the showroom floor. So Asian riders can't afford them and to be honest they don't really want them. Now Triumph doesn't have the kind of financial clout required to build its own factory in India. It was only able to set up its factory in Thailand because of very generous Thai government incentives. So the next best thing to do is to collaborate with an already established motorcycle manufacturer in India like Bajaj Autos and persuade them to build small capacity badge engineered Triumphs under license for them. Now, the negotiations to do this seem to have been going on forever. At least four years to my recollection. I know that the pandemic probably got in the way, but I did hear one or two reports that negotiations had broken down. After all, as attractive as the Triumph name might be to Bajaj, 
Triumph need Bajage more than Bajage need Triumph. And looking at these leaked spy shots, it would appear to me on the face of it that Triumph didn't exactly get their own way. Which is why this whole thing, you know, has probably taken so long to come to fruition. Now, Bajaj built its empire, if you like, building obsolete motor vehicles under license in India for the domestic market. Italian scooters, small capacity Japanese motorcycles. And I'm not sure, but I think they were involved in the Willis Jeep at one point. But they have now reached a stage of maturity where they're turning out original motorcycles to their own design. And they have capacity to build them in mind-boggling quantities. Which is perfect for a company like Triumph who wants to break into the Indian market. Now, let's just go back in time sort of three or four years. Triumph had the Speed Twin, 900ccs. I think it pumped out about 49 brake horsepower quite expensive for what it was and then royal enfield sort of announced the interceptor 650 and the continental gt 650 much cheaper bikes slightly smaller capacity about the same performance figures which made the street twin look like a really bad buy so almost overnight and quite out of the normal phase for model improvement triumph suddenly sort of released the street twin mac 2 an extra 10 brake horsepower brakes upgraded to brembo's from the usual nissin brakes and one or two other embellishments in order to justify the significantly higher retail price of the street twin now, there's nothing wrong with that. That is business. You know, you look at what your competition's doing and you try to outdo them in order to stay relevant and stay on top of your game. And that move did help Triumph save its own bacon. But it did put quite a lot of Triumph Street Twin customers' noses out of joint. After all, they just bought the brand new latest, greatest Street Twin. And then all of a sudden, without any prior warning, a new upgraded version appeared on the market at the same price a knee-jerk reaction on triumph's part but they didn't consider the optics and how that might affect customer loyalty and although this is not the same thing it sort of is the same thing these spy shots which i believe have been purposely released by triumph demonstrate the same sort of knee-jerk reaction without thinking about the optics now, if you just Google Google Images for Triumph spy shots, this is what you come up with. Hastily snapped photographs of a motorcycle, for the most part whizzing by, being ridden by a scruffy test rider, wearing sort of regulation high-vis safety gear. These riders are under strict instructions not to hang about, not to park up anywhere, unless they have to stop for fuel, obviously because Triumph don't want photographs leaking. These bikes at prototype stage often don't look very good, so they don't want anybody snapping photographs of them. Not only that, they don't want the competition finding out what they're up to and getting an idea of what the bike is going to be so that they can copy them. And not only that, when it's finally time to release the bike, they want to make a grand entrance with something that no one's seen before. And it's the same with most other motorcycle manufacturers. You know, they're not the best photographs in the world and they're almost always on the move as the speed past the photographer. But the spy shots of the new Baby Bonneville are quite different. The rider isn't wearing the regulation high-vis. In fact, for a test rider, he's quite smartly dressed, almost as though he'd been told to smarten himself up for the photographs. Not only that, he very conveniently pulled up, parked the bike, giving the photographer a very convenient view, whilst he sent a text to his mum asking what he was having for tea when he got home. Now, you might have a different viewpoint of this, and that is absolutely fine, but my spidey senses tell me that these photographs were very deliberately staged and very deliberately released by Triumph to coincide with the press release of the Hunter 350. 
The Radder even obligingly stepped out of camera shot for this one. Now, it was no secret that the Hunter 350 was about to be released. Even Siddhartha Lel sort of posted some pictures, I think it was on Instagram, a few days ahead of the release. So, Triumph did have the heads up that that bike was coming, and it's a very nice looking bike. So, in a way, it sort of makes sense that Triumph might want to make use of that moment in time. The problem is, officially releasing photographs of an as yet unfinished prototype is a bit cringy and obvious. So, the pretense of it being an uncontrolled leak of spy shots sort of keeps them on the right side of public opinion. Personally, as I say, I think these have been staged. That's my personal opinion. So, what about the actual bike itself? Well. I can't tell a lie, for me, first impressions were quite underwhelming. This bike looks very generic in design, and it doesn't really stand apart from any Japanese mid or small capacity motorcycle currently on the market. There's nothing remarkable about it. Now, I am going to cover my back with the caveat that this is, after all, just a prototype. It's not the finished article. We don't know what the finished bike will eventually look like. Also, the paint job is just plain black everywhere, so that's not going to show any motorcycle at its best. We don't know what graphics or paint jobs that Triumph might have planned for this bike. One thing that I can say with reasonable certainty is that this is not a Bonneville. What I mean is, it doesn't seem to have any of the inherent design cues that we've come to expect from Triumph Bonneville range. All I really see in this package is a sort of small capacity generic commuter with a slight hint of sportiness. Upside down front forks, monoshock rear suspension and a modern performance type silencer. It's clearly a single cylinder bike, and it would seem to me that Triumph's actual main input into this design have been the design of the power plant. Because the rest of the bike, to be quite honest, could have been built by anyone. Now, looking at the shrouded downpipe on the exhaust, it looks to me like they've gone for a similar underslung catalytic converter. I might be wrong, but that's how it looks and the engine is very obviously water-cooled. I mean, looking at this bike, it doesn't come over as a modern classic. There are no specific period cues in its design, except perhaps for the fuel tank, which, I mean, it doesn't look modern, but it looks to me like it came off a 1980s Yamaha. It doesn't really strike me as being Bonneville-esque, now, we don't know what the engine size is going to be on this bike, but it could be that there's the possibility there of one or two different engine sizes. Starting at maybe 250cc, although personally I think 350cc would be more sensible, with availability going up to 500cc, although again I think a 450 would be more sensible. But I do think to cover um, you know, as much of the market as possible, they're probably going to offer this in at least two engine sizes, derived from the same basic power plant. Now, I have to keep reminding myself that this is just a prototype, but it does look like a very late stage prototype to me, possibly pre-production. But from my viewpoint, it's a sort of a Heinz 57 variety, you know, there's no specific identity as to what this bike is it's just like i've said to me a generic commuter it's got no real identity now that could of course change depending on what graphics and paint schemes triumph decide to use for this bike that's going to make a huge difference to how this bike looks now the mere fact that these pictures were in inverted commas leaked at the same time that the Hunter was announced, suggests to me that this is intended to go head-to-head -head with Royal Enfield's trio of 350s. 
most notably the Hunter 350, which in my opinion is the one to follow for everybody at the moment. Now, I've already had a lot of comments thrown at me about this bike. Everybody seems to be similarly uninspired by it. And I've got no idea where the information came from, but one viewer even suggested that the retail price for this bike is going to be around about £6,000. Now, take that figure with a pinch of salt, because I've got no idea where they got that information from. I've got no way of ratifying it. And to be honest, if this bike is going to cost that kind of money, I think Triumph have lost the match before they even started. I mean, you're slightly over and above Interceptor 650 money at that price. That would certainly work out too expensive for the Asian market. And to be quite honest, at the moment, I don't think this bike is special enough to even command that sort of money here in the UK. Now, of course, my taste in motorcycles is not the same as everyone else's taste in motorcycles. I fully appreciate people will view this bike with different eyes. After all, it's obvious that the Asian taste in motorcycle design is very different from the Western taste in motorcycles, in which case they might be quite on point with this bike. But one thing is painfully clear triumph are very late to the game with this bike there is already a lot of very established competition in the segment this bike is aimed at but the triumph name is very desirable in a lot of people's eyes and obviously it's something that triumph do trade on very heavily and that might be enough to propel this bike into the asian psyche as an affordable proposition depending on what the price does turn out to be. It also depends on how Triumph pitch this bike if they keep up this pretense of a premium brand in places like India. It could well end up being rejected. After all, both BMW and Harley Davidson have tried similar tricks in the Asian market and failed. Or at the very least, they've had mixed results. Which is a clear demonstration that a big name doesn't necessarily carry enough weight in those markets. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how this one plays out. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I will put up another poll for you to decide what the subject of Friday's video is going to be. I'm not going to leave a link in the video description because so many people with mobile devices have had trouble accessing it, so... I'll leave it up to those of you that want to participate in that poll to find the actual poll itself on the community page of my channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like. And if you're not already sub a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. I will, of course, be back on Friday. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.